fast and affordable and they actually print well? This is too good to be true. We're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Elegoo Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro 3D printers. So these are the brand new Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printers and I'm still kind of amazed at the pricing for these considering all the things that they come packed with them. The pricing for the Neptune 4 is starting at $259 and the Neptune 4 Pro is $299. These are incredibly budget friendly fast 3D printers for anyone in the market that's potentially just looking to get started with 3D printing or upgrade to maybe have a larger print farm and wanted to pack in a little more speed to their 3D prints while still being able to maintain some nice print quality with the things that you're printing. Now with these printers, you are gonna have to do some assembly when it comes to putting them together. However, it takes no time at all. And in fact, after getting the Neptune 4 assembled, I started the 18 minute Benchy. That's right, an 18 minute Benchy on one of these bed slingers. And I tried to see if I could get the Neptune 4 Pro fully assembled before that print completed. And I was able to achieve that. And there is, uh, there's four minutes left on this print. And even though these are still bed slinger 3D printers that are rocking a build volume of 200 225 by 225 by 265 millimeters, they are still able to print pretty dang fast thanks to the inclusion of Clipper. This is gonna allow you to have even greater control over your 3D printer and your prints and really dialing in all of those settings and allowing this to print at its maximum potential. Now I'm completely new when it comes to working with Clipper and if you're in the same boat, don't worry because Elegoo provides you with a fantastic starting point with these machines and all the settings that come pre-baked into them. And that's what I've used for all the prints that I'm showing in today's video. However, if you wanna run off and dial in the printer even further, there's a fantastic starting starting point by Wild Rose Builds that I'll have linked to down below that shows you how to tune in the Neptune 4 printers using Clipper. Both of the printers are also running direct drive extruders with dual fans and they're even using new longer nozzles that are supposed to help with some of the flow of the filament that's coming out of there. I'm not entirely sure, but here's a quick comparison between the old standard style nozzle and the new ones here. Now, one thing I am interested in is trying to see if I can find some variations of these new nozzles that come in 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or even 1.0 nozzle sizes. And one big addition to these printers is the massive set of fans that you're gonna see on the back of the printer that are gonna help direct air to the extruder while it's printing at those crazy high speeds. Now, this does come with one big drawback and that it's kind of loud when you're up and printing. But the good news is it has a toggle on and off switch that if you're not printing at those crazy fast speeds, you can just turn that off and have it print normally and it's not gonna be super loud. But it is rather loud when it's printing with all four of those fans up and running. And a few other quick call out features of the Neptune printers include dual Z rods for better stability when printing. It also includes a nice touch screen interface, very similar to what we've seen on the previous Neptune 3D printers. There's also belt tensioners on both the X and Y. This also includes a filament runout sensor and there's now two different sets of LED lights on the machine one along the top carriage for better viewing when you're printing, as well as one directly on the extruder so that you can get a better look exactly where you're printing on the bed. And speaking of the bed, this also includes auto mesh bed leveling, but it also has the adjustable knobs on the bottom so that you can get a more precise bed leveling experience. And when it comes to leveling the beds, I'll do the manual bed leveling first, then run the auto mesh bed leveling, and then adjust my Z offset as needed. And when it comes to loading files on the printer, you now have have a few different options. We now have a full USB port that I'm so enjoying having access to on the front of the machine. You also have your micro SD port and there's a USB-C port as well on the front of the machine. Now, there's no Wi-Fi or mobile app or even a camera built into the printer. However, it does come with an ethernet cable and you can plug the printers into your network to get direct access to the printers. And in fact, It's a Boy in Space showed me that you could actually plug in a USB webcam directly into the printer and via the Clipper web interface, you can actually remotely view and monitor your 3D printer with that webcam. And the big differences between the Pro version and the standard version of the Neptune 4 is that on the Pro, there are these smooth rods that the extruder is gonna be able to move back and forth on to provide a smoother printing experience, as well as it has a zoned heated bed. So if you're printing something relatively small, you only need to heat up that small center portion of the build plate versus the entire build plate. And before we take a look at some of the prints that I've made on these machines, I wanna say a huge thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're obviously the makers of the Neptune 4 
and the Neptune 4 Pro, which again is a super budget friendly set of fast FDM 3D printers coming in at $259 for the Neptune 4 and $299 for the Neptune 4 Pro. If you are interested in more information about these machines or pre-ordering one for yourself, you can find links to those down below. Also for a bunch of the things that I went off and printed, I was using the Elegoo version of Cura that comes with the printers that has a profile baked in for it. And I think the default print speed is 250 millimeters per second. It says that they can go all the way up to 500. However, I'd stick to around 250 or even potentially going a little bit less if you wanted to crank up the quality even more. But so far, just loving the print quality that I've been getting off of these machines. And the first thing that I went off and printed were these 18 minute benchies on both of the machines. Is it the best looking benchy? No, but it's pretty impressive impressive for the quality that we're getting printing at those crazy fast speeds. Again, in only 18 minutes for one of these benchies. I then went off and printed this really cool looking Nintendo Switch holder by Hollow Props. This printed in a few different pieces, no supports needed for either of them. And unfortunately ended up running into one small print issue with some of those flames on the backside with this rainbow silk filament that I think is just coming down to some of my settings that I need to have dialed in for this filament. But overall, this looks nice and clean, especially the rocket. I ended up using the new rapid white PLA from Elgoo. Now I know white isn't the best to show off some of the details, so we'll try and get a little better view of these. But I think overall, very impressive pressed with again printing at that 250 millimeters per second. Now one of the drawbacks that you're going to find when trying to print anything really fast is that you're going to potentially need to put brims on some of your prints, especially if they have really thin contact points like this Kunai that's a print in place model from Nico Industries. It is so friggin cool. This is such a wild file to run off and print for like forget the printer, forget this video. If you run off and try to print anything, print one of these files. It's such a fun thing to have here. It's all print in place, no supports needed. I used a brim, so I ended up having to do a little bit more cleanup than I wanted to with this. I might attempt printing this without a brim and slowing it down. And I think it was only like a four hour or a five hour print. Again, just incredible. And the print itself looks really good. And when it comes to printing with the Neptune printers, I almost always have to print an Eastman bust. And this time I went with Bane. This is one of his newest files. I think it might have been just a little bit too intricate or just pushing the limits of what this Neptune printer could do. Uh, it's supposed to be support free, but I think I probably needed a few supports on some of those cables up there, or maybe I needed to slow things down a little bit further. Overall, I think the print looks pretty good. The base of this with that rapid filament does look really nice and clean here. Again, printed at 250 millimeters per second with this 0.4 millimeter nozzle at a 0.2 layer height for both of these prints. Again, I'm just kind of wishing I put a few supports there on some of those cables to better support this here during that printing process. Also, here's a great look at that auto mesh bed leveling with this large bust of Bane and how smoothly it printed. I then ended up finding a file of a rope bowl over on printables that I downloaded and printed on the Neptune 4 Pro and it looks beautiful. This turned out to be, I think like an eight hour print. And I think it's because of all the small intricate movements and details that it needed to print with this file. But this just looks flawless. I'm extremely happy with the quality of this print. I then ended up finding this bearded captain skull file from Roji Studios that I went off and printed on both the Neptune 4 and the 4 Pro. And I ended up printing it in this rainbow majestic cookie cad PLA that I love printing with. And I think the skull, there's a little bit of ribbing that I'm seeing on there, which leads me to believe I might need to tighten up some of my belts ever so slightly. But overall, this print again is looking really nice at a 0.2 layer height. And the last thing I ended up printing is this crazy cool fidget skull thing from clock spring 3d. I love how this turned out. This printed so beautifully and it took, I think four hours and 30 minutes to print. This is again using the Elegoo black rapid PLA. It is designed for faster printing, which it might explain why this looks so clean coming off of the Neptune four. And I like that print so much that I ran the same file back using some glittery purple PLA that I had on hand 
and this again just came out flawlessly. I'm so happy with how this printed. Again, all in vase mode here. Oh, and I also ended up slicing these in a Prusa slicer profile that I ended up creating based off of someone else's profile for another fast bed slinger and then tweaking it for the Neptune 4 and the 4 Pro that I'll be sharing with my Patreons. And I wanted to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the internet. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. Now, if you've been interested in a fast FDM 3D printer, but don't want to break the bank to get one, the Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro might be the perfect option for you. I've been getting some stellar looking prints off of these machines, and I haven't even started the process of dialing them in or even attempting to connect and learn how to work with Clipper. Keep in mind, this is not a review of the Neptune printer since this video is being sponsored by Elgoo, but I am really enjoying all the different prints that I've gotten off of these machines so far, and you will 1,000% be seeing more prints from me here and online of different things that I'm printing with the new Neptune 4 3D printers. I want to say thanks so much for watching while hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.